Today, we're gonna to talk about can you learn to code, and if so, exactly how you do it. So learning to code and the learning to code movement can sometimes get kind of complicated, but I think it breaks down to where you can see it in one of two ways. The first way is, hey, if you got laid off, you can just learn to code, take a Udemy course, you'll have a job in a week, and they make it seem like there's this kind of magic beans or this instant take on how to learn to code. Easy. And the other way is, we look at learning to code and software development in general as some kind of black mystic arts that only a select few of elite minds can actually achieve to do. You must be the chosen one in order to learn how to code. You are the chosen one! Today, I'm going to remove the mystery and the false information in the learn to code market. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to learn and exactly what you need to do to get that first software job. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications on all of our great new content. So let's talk about learning to code. Now, as you know, I am running a coding bootcamp called Coder Foundry, but I don't want this video to be a direct commercial for Coder Foundry per se. I have been teaching students since 2014 to enter the world of full stack web dev. We also place students into those jobs. I also run a consulting company where we hire students and hire contractors to help us complete our software projects. So I know a lot about this space. I've been on the education side, I'm on the placement side, and I've also been on the hiring side. So I actually know what it takes for you to break into that software job. So what I'm gonna tell you today is how you should learn, what you should learn. I'm gonna talk about the things that you need to do to get the job and with the bonus tip, a couple of things that will keep you motivated as you go through your learning journey. So the point of this video is to maximize your opportunities to break into the software industry. Some of the common knowledge out there is that you can take any online coding course and become a software developer. I don't think this is true. Even in the comments on our YouTube channel, you will see people say, hey, it doesn't matter what you learn or how you learn it, just learn how to code and then you become a software developer. I look at this as the five magic beans approach to software development. I don't think it works. Now, this harkens back to the story, Jack and the Beanstalk. Now, if you don't know the story, Jack went to market to sell a cow. And along the way, he met a guy who sold him five magic beans in exchange for the cow. And he come home and told his mom, hey, look at these five magic beans that I have. And of course, she thought he was crazy and she threw the beans in the backyard. Now, if you think that you can just take a course and become a software developer by just the act of taking the course, that is like buying or selling the cow for five magic beans. Now, if you read the rest of the story, the magic beans grew into a beanstalk, Jack had to climb it, and then he had to fight a giant, he had to steal the gold, and he had to save the girl. So in order for him to get the outcome that he wanted, there became some commitment and grit on his part. There was a lot of hard work there. Now let me be clear, no course, no boot camp, no college can pump information into your head and make you a software developer. I know Kung Fu. Show me. It takes commitment and grit on your side. Having said that, this is not an impossible task either. Learning to code is something you absolutely can do. You do not have to be an elite mind of our generation to undertake this task. If you look in the comments on our YouTube channel and Twitter at large, there are a lot of people that say you must study five to eight years full time before you can ever get a software job. That's simply not true. I've also heard people think, say that I'm a third generation coder and my dad was a coder and therefore I am one too, that somehow there's a coding gene that's passed down from father to son or from mother to daughter. And that's also simply not true. The coding gene is not the X gene in the x man We are the future of the human race. It's something that you can do. It is a acquired skill, something that's learned and something that's knowable. It's a something you can do. The question is, do you have the aptitude the desire and the grit to finish the learning process. Now you may ask yourself the question, how do I know if I have the aptitude? Am I smart enough to learn how to do this? Or if you're unsure about that, go to coderfoundry.com slash quiz. We've built a developer quiz that can put you in the ballpark to tell you if you have the walking around natural aptitude to learn how to code. Typically, if you get an 80 or above, 
it's probably something you should consider. Now, if you get lower than that, that doesn't mean you should quit or go do something else. It just means that your learning path may be different or you may take a longer time to learn how to do it. It doesn't mean that you should stop right there. But if you get an 80 or above, that means in a boot camp setting or a fast paced online course, you'll probably be pretty successful at learning how to do this. So let's talk about how I learned to code. There's basically three ways that you can do this. You have online, you have boot camps, and then you have college, university, community college, those types of avenues. And online, you basically watch content and it's up to you to like um, have the desire and the grit and everything is self-motivated and the course is just online. So everything that's in the course you must get all of your knowledge from that. There's typically no one to ask and there's no help there. You just watch the course, you do the tutorial, you build the projects. In boot camps, it's a little bit different. In boot camps, you have a teacher, an instructor there that you can ask questions. Typically, you go full time during the day. It's a little bit more expensive than the online option. Online by far is the least expensive. And boot camps is in between the cost range between that and college. However, with ISAs, now your kind of risk or your initial cash outlay is reduced to almost zero. So bootcamp is a great way if you need a teacher or coach or a mentor, and that's what we do at Coder Founder. There's also college and community college, and these are also avenues for a lot of people. If you have a good community college in your area, you typically can go to a two-year program. If you have a great college in your area, or a university, you can get a four-year CS degree, and those are options as well. CS degrees are still highly valued in the industry, but as we're seeing, sometimes skills can, can trump those as well, but those two things together are a good thing. So let's talk about what you should learn on your learning to code journey. A lot of times people start with the language first, and I don't want to do that. Now, if you've been watching our channel a lot, you're probably thinking he's gonna recommend C Sharp, which is probably true if you ask me, I think that's what you need to learn. But there's a reason that we recommend it, not because we think C Sharp is cool, is because we have picked the job first. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to pick the job that you want to do and then figure out what language or what stack you should learn how to do. If you pick full stack web dev, which we think is the most in-demand job in America, that you should learn certain stacks and technologies go along with that. We think ASP.NET C Sharp MVC is a fantastic stack to learn full stack web dev. But the reason we recommend that language is because it corresponds with the job that we want. Now I want you to pick the job that you want first. You can pick mobile dev, you can pick desktop dev, you can pick full stack web dev, you can pick embedded dev, data science, doesn't matter which job that you pick, but then pick the stack that you want to learn that corresponds with the job or the role that you have specified. And once you do that, you can maximize your opportunities in your learning because now your learning is focused towards the job that you want. Now, what we think is that you should pick full stack web dev because that's the most in-demand job. And so that maximizes your opportunity to break in. But if you're not interested in that and you wanna learn mobile dev, there's lots of opportunities in mobile dev. There's lots of opportunities in desktop dev as well. So pick the job, learn the stack that corresponds with that job, and that maximizes your opportunity to get that first software job. So let's talk about what it takes to get that first software job. Now, I believe that employers are increasingly going to rely on portfolios from first time developers, especially if you're just trying to break in for the first time, they're gonna to wanna to see if you can actually do the work. And the best way you can demonstrate that you have the skills necessary to do the job is show them a portfolio of working software projects. Now, I believe they have to be business focused projects. Something has authorization, authentication, a database, and some kind of professional UI and solve a business type problem. At Coder Founder, we teach a bug tracker, we have a financial portal, and we have a blog. Coder Founder grads are gonna have those three projects on their portfolio. So if you're interviewing against a Coder Founder grad, they're gonna walk in the door with a portfolio that shows who they are and three functioning business level um, projects in the portfolio. And I think increasingly employers are gonna want you to have that as well. So think about building those business projects. Now, you could walk, walk in with tic-tac-toe, and I'm sure someone's putting a comment right now that says, hey, all I have was tic-tac-toe on my portfolio and I got a job, but I don't want you to, to achieve the bare minimum required to get a job. 
I want to maximize your opportunities. So I think you should build one, maybe possibly three business projects to put on your portfolio to show your skills, the breadth and depth of the things that you can do so that you can maximize your opportunities during the interview process and also the types of roles that you can take on and possibly make more money. So build a portfolio, put business projects on it so you can maximize your opportunities. So you may be asking yourself, hey, I've taken on this learn to code journey. I'm learning online. I'm going the self-taught route. How do I stay motivated? And we get this asked a lot on our YouTube channel. And I think it's a very simple technique that you can use to stay motivated so you complete this journey. And I'm gonna sum that up by saying, build a project. Now, when you're learning to code and you're taking online courses, typically you're taking a course that, that ends in a tutorial, that ends in a project, and hopefully you're taking project-based tutorials. And what I want you to do is take that tutorial, build that project to completion, and then start over and build a brand new project using the skills that you learned in the tutorial. I do not want you to put the tutorial project on your portfolio. I want you to put a brand new work on your portfolio and build this project. Now this does a couple of things for you, but you've set a goal of a thing that you must build that you must complete. And this helps keep you motivated because you wanna have that sense of accomplishment and that sense of achievement by building your own project. But there's two other, I think, super benefits that it gives you. First, if you build a project, a brand new project, after completing a tutorial, you're taking the tutorial, the skills that you learned and applied it to a new work. This solidifies the learning in your brain. It also gives you confidence that what you learned how to do in the tutorial, you can repeat on a brand new unrelated project, which means you learn how to code. And this gives you a lot of confidence. And that confidence can shine through during the interview process, which is mission critical when people are trying to evaluate you, especially for that first job, can this person do this? And you're showing um, new original work that you've built, and that's gonna press the hiring manager. But more than that, it's gonna give you that inner confidence during the interview process to help you land that first role. Well, I hope all of this helps. Good luck and keep coding.